Hey everyone, the name is Rick Dorn. In today's video, we're studying the ESFJ personality type. And if there's one thing I've noticed about all ESFJs, it's that they are involved with social management, social sensing and feeling, management, extroverted and judging. What this means is the core priority is taking and studying what is happening around you and looking at the people and what they are doing and thinking about their morals and their behavior and their actions and their emotions and what they are feeling and going in and talking to people, engaging with people, talking about their situation, what they're doing, what they're struggling with and how they could improve, how they could be happier, what they could do about their life and their problems. So ESFJs are all involved with these core things. Management comes from being an extroverted and judging type. The extroverted and judging type looks at what people want, how they can get there, what goals they have, how they are trying to get there, what they are doing to get there. And then they see and then they adjust and then they say, okay, then you need to get there and then you need to make that decision for yourself and then you need to change that about yourself. So ESFJs, they make ideal coaches, they make ideal people managers, they work great in fields where you have to be social with people. You have to be attentive to people. You have to pay attention to what they are saying, what they're doing, what they're going through. And you know, when you meet ESFJs, what you notice quickly is, well, they know everyone. One thing I noticed about ESFJs is they know everyone. They, they pay attention to everybody around them. They know the person who looks, works at the local cafe. They know his mother. They know his sister they know his sister's cousin and there it goes that is the track the esfj is interested in everybody and in everything they see esfjs have a natural curiosity to them they pay attention to their surroundings they're attentive they are experienced they like being in the moment where things happen they like being where things happen they like to engage the world they like to be in the world where things are happening so what you could say that ESFJ has is this natural party mode. <laughs> the, and in this sense, what you notice about ESFJs is they like to organize the party. They don't like to be necessarily the party, but they like to organize and put it together. They are the people that plan the events. They are the people that bring discipline and structure to everything that's happening around them. So they know what they're going to do tomorrow. They know they're, what they're going to do the next week. They usually have this kind of calendar to them. They manage time. They see what's going to happen. They notice different trends and what's popular, what's hip, what's trendy. And then they see, okay, I can do that tomorrow. And that party is happening then. And if I make that party and if I show up then, then I can be and I can meet, make that other, meet, meet my friends later on. So they're very good at managing people and also managing time with people. And often what friendships and managing friendships is all about is that of managing time with people. You know, friendships have to be actively held together. A lot of us, we lose our friendships and our connections because we lose interest. We move on. We forget about each other it's because we get caught up in work. We get caught up with family things. We get caught up with school and that keeps us from sticking together. But the ESFJs, they are often the social glue. So what that means is they see and they know and they feel connected to everyone around them naturally. And their natural inclination is to like people. They start out liking everybody. You know, ESFJs, they have a generosity to them. They like giving things to other people. So often what you find with the ESFJ is their inclination is what can I give to others? What can I say to others? What can I do for others to make them happier, to make them feel better, to make things in some ways improve their condition and their life situation? So the trait of feeling is visible here. Feeling is a benevolent concept in its very essence. It focuses typically on life and nature and on uh, things that are emotional in their nature. So the ESFJ's focus is here. What can I do for people's emotions and for what they are feeling? If a person is feeling bad about something, what can I do to make them feel better? What can I say? How can I, what can I do for them? And you know, ESFJs, they are natural communicators. So they like to talk to people. They like to say, hey, and they like to give pep talks. They like to energize people. They like to share and spread passion and enthusiasm and energy. And they like to get people to feel better. Ideally, the ESFJ wants to turn you around in every conversation you have with them. 
come to an ESFJ when you're upset. They want you to leave the conversation feeling happy and recharged. And sometimes it can be difficult for them when you don't, when you're still not happy afterwards. Did I say something wrong? Did I not tell you the right way? ESFJs sometimes have an, uh, sometimes over communicate or overshare or uh, push too much emotionally on other people to the point where other people may start putting up walls or resisting them or deciding to be sad or deciding to be annoyed or angry just for the sake of protecting your right to feel a certain way, the way you're feeling right now. So what the ESFJ has to learn is that of emotional boundaries. You know, ESFJs, they don't start out this way, like I've talked about them in this movie, uh, like this, in this video. ESFJs cannot just be this way all the time. It's not possible to maintain this mood all the time. It's not possible to always be like this. And you know, as an ESFJ, if you ever come to a situation where you're feeling like, I am not myself, I don't know how to be happy anymore, I don't know how to get energy, I don't have any energy, you know. What you need to look at is, am I getting my needs met? You know, ESFJs, like all people, have dominant primary core needs. And the, those core needs, they come from your shadow functions. So what you need to look at is introverted sensing, you need to look at feeling perceiving, you need to look at sensing perceiving, you need to look at introverted feeling. So often there comes a time where the ESFJ has to recharge and get back to themselves and get back the energy. And often what the ESFJ's four needs boil down to is they need people to listen to them. They need other people to see them, not just hear them, or just, uh, but also to pay attention to what they are saying and what exactly are you saying, what exactly do you mean. ESFJs need people to decode them. They need people that listen to them, that listen well, listen hard, like seriously listen to you and introspect on what you say and think about what you say. ESFJs need to feel like other people are actually thinking about them and what they are saying and what they are feeling and that other people can understand and think about it intrapersonally by themselves. Other people around you can take the time to reflect on you and what you've said and what you've done and not just take what you said at face value. ESFJs also need a degree of spontaneity, you know. ESFJs, they tend to have everything planned and mapped out for them. But through this, they need people that can constantly throw new curveballs at them. They need people that can keep them on their toes. And what they need is some spontaneity in their life to keep their sensing active. They need to constantly get people around them that can say, but what about this? And now this is happening. And you said you, we, we were supposed to be there at five. But now we have an event that just cut, popped up at four. So the ESFJ needs these things to happen around them to keep themselves on and to keep themselves engaged and stimulated. And they, without it, there is not enough energy, there is not enough fuel to fuel your dominant process, making you less communicative, making you less experienced, making you less attentive, making you less passionate. Now, as an ESFJ, what you will be doing is you will be going through phases. You won't be all of these things all the time you'll find yourself jumping from situation to situation. So you're gonna be jumping between extroverted sensing, sensing and judging, feeling and judging, and extroverted feeling, and then back to extroverted sensing. Perhaps you'll notice all of these phases through just one month. Often what I notice is we are sometimes in a phase where we're primarily observing. We're just taking in, we're just watching people, we're just studying people, we're just, uh, talking and sharing what we're seeing. We're just uh, going through our day, just living life, just being in the moment, just uh, seeing what's happening around us, just making things happen for other people, creating a new stage or environment or making something happen. That's the extroverted sensing phase and it's fueled by a heightened attention, sometimes hyper attention. ESFJs can get to this point where they become hyper attentive in a sense of uh, paying too much attention to what's happening around them to the point of missing things that's happening beneath the surface. When you're too on, when you're too engaged, when you're too charged up, you get to this point where you can become reckless and you can make decisions and you can uh, forget about the important other considerations. So you can become ungrounded or unstable in your dominant process. It can become too much. You can become too much of yourself. There is such a thing as too much of yourself. Now the sensing and judging phase that's characterized by 
discipline and that's uh, when you're going through a phase of organization and structure and calendars and you have everything planned out and everything is going to a recipe and everything is uh, has a method and structure to it so you know where you're gonna be every day you have a good sense of rhythm you know the time you know what's happening you're keeping up with everything that's going on on your to-do list but in this sense you can lead to over discipline and to missing out on other important things that can be also uh, forgetting to schedule time to do nothing. It can also be uh, over planning for other people and uh, putting too much on other people's plate. It can be uh, tying yourself down too neatly to the point where you miss some important flexibility. And what happens here is you miss an, out on new opportunities and you miss out on changes around you. Now, when you go into feeling and judging, what happens is you start out with just an increase in generosity you start becoming extra giving you start becoming extra involved with your community you start taking on a lot of different chores and activities for other people you start uh, involving yourself with other people you're always on the phone with somebody you're always talking with people you're always helping out or you're engaging with people or doing something and your focus is constantly people 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 emotional needs emotional needs emotional needs constantly your focus is what are my emotional goals? Where am I going emotionally? Who am I as a person? Who do I want to be? You're always working on yourself in that sense. And here in this phase, what can happen is uh, you can start missing out on thinking and perceiving. You can find yourself in a situation where you become um, irrationally giving to the sense of overgiving, becoming over generous with yourself or exceeding your boundaries. Finally, there's the extorted feeling phase, and this is when you start feeling extra passionate. You're uh, constantly uh, like uh, dealing with and being around people. There's always things happening. You're uh, focused on your moral behavior and who you are as a person. You're very focused on that interpersonal relationship you have with other people, your connections. Who do, who, who do I know? Who do I meet? Who am I going to meet tomorrow? You're focused on all those aspects of uh, the people and what the people want and what they are thinking about. Sometimes to the point where... Uh, and the extorted feeling state is uh, sometimes known for that of uh, being too much for other people or being putting too much emotions into something or being too excited and being too emotional and too involved with the situation being too passionate about something other people can start thinking oh it's too much or i can't handle this and this is too intense for me you know other people might need more time to scale down and to tune out and to take it easy and other people uh, might also think that uh, there's an importance to to slowing down and thinking things through rationally and not getting too excited about all those possibilities or experiences that you have ahead of yourself, but also maintaining a cool head and thinking and realizing that there could be a problem, there could be issues, there could be things to look out for and there could there could be a chance for disappointment. You know, ESFJs, they struggle with understanding that there can be a chance for disappointment and issues. Now, for the most part, all of this is good when you can be yourself, when you can be attentive, when you can be disciplined, kind and passionate in harmony with one another, all four traits of yourself balanced, when you can involve yourself with management and with people and with social matters, that's all good, that's the ideal. The only thing you need to recognize is that the inferior, your stressors, like um, your need for uh, well, your fear of the unknown, your issues with the change and with being flexible to other people and to new ideas. All those things can be important to a small degree. Just make sure you portion it right. Make one change but keep 9 out of 10 things together as you used to. Make one change every week but don't make too many changes. And be kind because that's always great. But do something for yourself once a week. Do something just for yourself. Or... Yeah, be very passionate and be excited, but sit down for a minute, write down your doubts, write down your issues and potential problems. Uh, so you, just so you know, just so you know that it's there. That's my growth advice for you as an ESFJ. I hope this video helped you. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you all in my next video.